Hello and welcome to Fresh Thinking by Snowden Optiero, a podcast where we delve into the technical aspects of the mining industry. My name's Taryn Ilkington, General Manager for, uh, for Snowden Optiero here in Perth. Uh, today, we're going to delve into the, the financial world a little bit and talk about uh, banks and how they get involved in mining projects and the technical aspects of how they, how they review them. And joining me for this discussion, I'm delighted to have here Bob Jankovic from, uh, from our Canadian office who's just, just joined us and is as an executive consultant. And Bob has more than 35 years of experience across the, in the mining industry, largely across Europe, North America and South America. And in particular, um, some great experience uh, as, as a technical advisor within, um, within, uh, within banks over in, in, in Canada. So uh, well placed to to advise us on this. So thanks thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Pleasure being here in a Snowden office in a beautiful Perth and uh, first time for me in Australia. And I'm glad to join this wonderful consulting firm. Fantastic. Yes, as you can see, that's uh, it's this sunny every day. Yeah. Um, so maybe you could start Bob by telling us a little bit about your experience um, with the banks. You know, what, what's your your past involvement been? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I was uh, fortunate really that uh, my career path uh, led in that direction at some point of time where um, where I first got the opportunity to join Scotiabank uh, years ago in investment banking. Uh, I was um, clearly rejected immediately that uh, opportunity like that, that, uh, that's not my world. I'm professional. I don't want to go in financing. Then um, digging deeper and um, Fortunately, uh, to some colleagues who insisted me to join, that is a good place for me to be. I decided to make that move, and uh, it's a wonderful, actual opportunity for us professionals to learn that side of the business and the capital market, how it's um, involved in our business, and how critical decisions we make. As a particular in the consulting world, uh, it's very critical present in any form of financing in a mining industry. So I joined uh, to go back just on my involvement. I was eight years with Scotia Bank in investment banking and then uh, three years with the Macquarie Bank, uh, just uh, here across the road uh, on um, a lending side as a technical uh, role exclusively. Fantastic. And, uh, and obviously the banks play such a, an, an important part. I mean, you know, all of our uh, clients that we work with in some way are involved. They require finance to do anything that we want to do in, uh, in, in the industry. Um, what are the, what are the, uh, the ways that, uh, that banks in general get involved in, in, in mining projects? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, in general, if I go back in a most important part of the financing and it comes to the big, uh, syndicated lending uh, uh, financing with um, hundreds plus million dollars for the big mining projects. Banks really ideally um, get involved at, uh, after the bankable feasibility study is issued and published and the project is fully permitted. That's ideal momentum and situation uh, where a bank would step in and uh, uh, putting the term sheets uh, sort of saying and uh, trying to get um, uh, financing to develop the mine. So uh, in Canada in particular, where I was mostly active in uh, my recent role on the lending side, uh, there was, uh, I've been in Canada for 30 years, uh, the most developing uh, mines ever I, anybody seen in recent hi mining history in Canada. It was about four or five of them at the same time. So very active uh, platform or our industry and uh, <clears throat> the employer that I was in, working for uh, was involved in uh, quite a few of those uh, uh, kind of financing. So it was quite busy time and I like you to answer, but when it comes to uh, investment banking and, <clears throat> and that's a very different approach and uh, that part of the businesses we look to get involved in a very early stage to recognize the good quality mining or advanced exploration projects and stay with the clients for an extensive period of time so we can really uh, invest and advise on investment to develop good uh, project that uh, we believe uh, it's worth investing yeah so and the, i guess the two sides of the coin there you've got lending versus sort of the equity the debt versus the equity side of the, of the business, right? Uh, they're quite different uh, approaches and different things that you're looking for. Correct. Yeah. 
So if we go on to the, to the lending side, what are the sorts of, you know, when you get that, let's call it bankable feasibility study, um, you know, what are the, the, the sorts of things uh, and the level of technical due diligence that, that, that lenders would do um, in reviewing a project? It's uh, amazingly very deep and very good, and uh, which is um, uh, very good for our industry, really, to have a people like myself and um, most of the banks, to my knowledge, has technical expertise so, to some extent, someone with uh, more uh, details uh, rather than the others. But in general, like I said, most of the major banks has a technical expertise and it's very critical. Uh, so we go to the great details, really, and certainly we don't start learning uh, about the project at the time just before financing. We we get ourselves familiarized and go through every possible report and every aspect of the projects and um, try to cover everything as a desktop review prior, we, when we, prior to getting the data room access. and diving really deep into the project and uh, analyzing on our own, implementing all that in a cash model with our finance colleagues and try to run sensitivities and uh, come to realization how, uh, uh, what's the risk to investing in that kind of projects and what needs to be done. And what, uh, I guess, did, was there any view that you had on what is a bankable feasibility study? Obviously, there's like a range of qualities that you get between uh, uh, the, the projects that come across your table, you know, across across your yeah. table, yeah? True. So the, the highest risk definitely starts from the block model and the resource slash reserves interpretation um, and um, how the deposit is interpreted, particularly in this uh, last couple of decades. As we know, uh, there was on a, on a, in a play an operation brought particularly in Canada and Canadian uh, shield, four or five big low grade uh, high tonnage deposits with uh, relatively high nugget effect and all that creates certain uh, risk and, and issues in interpreted and how uh, the one approach to those uh, projects to the, you know, implementing dilution, mining re uh, recoveries, processing recoveries, a structural understanding, water management, environmental. We consider all those aspects to the deep uh, depth uh, when we analyzed. Uh, and uh, that's inside the house, sort of saying, uh, internal. And how, as you know, we are not independent and it's always brings way more values when we bring in the independent technical review into the role and we engage I mean, we uh, banks engage uh, uh, always independent consulting firms uh, from early days, uh, starting again to review all those aspects of the projects. Excellent. One one um, question that always comes to my mind when when talking to customers um, is when they when it comes to uh, financing, how important is uh, our, our measured resources? You know, sometimes people are very, you know, keen to get measured resources versus just indicated mm -hmm. resources and trying to get proved or proven, depending on the code reserves versus just just probable. In your in your experience, has that been like an important, uh, you know, uh, criteria for? Yeah. That's, for a, that's a good point, and I would say now. Uh, at, at this brief kind of thinking that didn't play or any critical or really uh, rule in making decisions or m turning point uh, when you look at the ratio measure versus, versus indicated inferred yes of course yeah and we don't include uh, when it comes to the bankable uh, inferred at all uh, they're only included in PI uh, studies as you know uh, but um, ratio between measured indicated as long as it's properly done and classified uh, within the technical work uh, didn't play really any critical uh, role in making decisions really or feeling less more or less confident in what you're expecting and and i think uh one thing that I, i've always experienced or quite commonly experienced is uh, i guess when people go to to, to banks uh, and they get some feedback, right? You know, you've got this project and you're trying to promote it and make it look big and, and great. And, and, and quite often then when you end up going to, to, to get finance, you sort of, 
uh, maybe sometimes come back and look for something a bit smaller, you know, ready yeah. to reduces the risk, right? Because that's what your uh, a lender is trying to do. That's so common, and that's so good point you made. Um, it's so common, and it's all driven by if you step back in again initial geological interpretation, resource estimation, how well we understand the. Uh, trend organization and uh, how diligent we are to constrain and work uh, to the really details to not to smear the deposit, not to create too much tonnage if we don't have to. And again, particularly with this type of deposit where we are dealing with low grade and big tonnage gold deposits where it um, really takes time to understand uh, uh, the data population and to uh, create suitable domaining and good interpretation so you don't really overblow the volume of the deposit and which creates again uh, uh, many impacts down the road when you start mine planning if you're mining and if you're planning on the wrong volume and the tonnage hmm. uh, and, and create higher throughput from what you expect it could create really a uh, big issue for the operation and higher operating cost ultimately uh, if that's the case. So it's very critical part. And what can a, if, if somebody's looking to raise money um, or, or fund a project, right? Um, what uh, what can should a junior company do? What's what's sort of best practice for presenting that project in the best possible light? Like you obviously get a range of different yeah. qualities of information provided to you. I mean, yeah. What what's, what can, can companies do? Uh, with no question in my mind, uh, strong technical work. Strong technical team with the confidence, uh, with experience, and uh, uh, work that provides uh, any uh, reviews and every, doesn't matter if it's an internal banking review or independent, that we as a colleagues, as a peers, feel confident that that has been done to the great details and on a, on a, on a very uh, high level. So from understanding geology, good interpretation again, and good database to start with, good QA, QC, absolutely every step in developing that project feels uh, make a project much stronger and, and very confident. And overall, we get the impression when we are doing due diligence on, on a finance, behalf of the finance institution, that that team really wants to create a good project not just to promote yeah yeah and i think uh, i you know i think it's a it's a great point and something always in my mind when we're trying to do studies is what will a reviewer think and also um i always think it you know and, and it's good to hear from you that it's great for a company to preempt that in going to a financier and getting an independent you know party to do that due diligence up front to try to take the, I guess, the burden in some ways off of the bank to do their due diligence and you know um, provide an overall view of the uh, of, of the project. So I think that's a really uh... yeah, it is critical. Uh, even you know um, we follow those rules, but also as you know now in the industry, many decisions are subjective. Uh, as geology is very uh, abstract science and. Uh, uh, it's very good always to have uh, uh, several opinions, um, call it independent or not independent, that's irrelevant. If you're a professional, I deem that every professional uh, is going to do maximum to its, uh, its abilities to provide a suitable opinion, regardless whom he or she is working with. Uh, so, but it's important to have that peer review, to have multiple opinions and to be able to come up with a good, good answer. Oh, that's that's great, and I, so I think that gives us a really good overview of, uh, particularly on the lending side of the uh, of projects, and maybe for a, in a future podcast we will delve into the uh, the investment um, banking yeah. side and the and the differences um, associated with that. Yeah, that would be fun. That's another uh, challenge for sure. So yeah, like like I said, I, I don't think there's you know anything more relevant to 
you know, uh, mining companies than thinking, you know, developing projects and how they're going to ultimately get financed because that's what it's all that's Absolutely. what it's all about. Absolutely. So, so thank you very much for your for, for your insights. Um, you know, the, this is this is a process that we're largely involved in here at Snowden Optero and involved in at many, many levels from either developing projects uh, at a technical level or, or, or reviewing them. Um, so so please reach out to us if you're if you're interested. And um, so thanks very much for joining us. Another episode of our Snowden Optero podcast. Um, if you liked the, the podcast, please subscribe uh, to us on, on YouTube and you can uh, access us on Spotify, uh, YouTube and any, any good um, uh, podcast platform.